Hi, I'm Scott Saprizio with United Engine, and United Engine's been pissing since 1922. Um, we're coming up on 98 years of uh, doing business. Uh, today we're going to talk about piston alloys and specifically about eutectic alloys. And I would say that probably 98% of all the pistons used in the aftermarket today are eutectic alloys. Now these examples that we have here from the largest which is a big diesel, as you can see, down to the smallest, which is a two-cycle application. Um, these are all eutectic alloys. And eutectic alloys have a specific characteristic about them that make them unique. And that's what we're going to really talk about today, is those characteristics. Now, there'll be a part two to this video, and part two will cover the characteristics that, that are given when we mix two metals together, and it'll get into the design and how you may utilize a eutectic alloy. But today we just want to talk about those things that make a eutectic alloy unique. So the first thing is, is we're going to add silicon and aluminum. These are the two primary ingredients that make up a eutectic alloy for pistons. There are other elements, but these are the prime ones that we're dealing with. So um, silicon in this case is added at about 12% by weight of the total volume to aluminum. But let's look at a eutectic and look at some variations of eutectic. For instance, tin and lead comprise solder. They're a eutectic alloy. Aluminum and silicon, of course, are eutectic alloy. Kind of interesting, uh, cast iron with greater than 4% carbon added is a eutectic alloy. So you can see there, there are variations to this, but they all have a similar characteristic. So the first characteristic is that when the two, when the two metals are added together, that it will melt at a lower temperature than either of the constituents added. So let's take our solder here. And this is made up of tin and lead. And it's made up of about 60% tin and about 40% lead. The tin melts at 446 degrees and the lead melts at 626. Yet the melting point when they're added together is 338 degrees. That to me, when I first heard about it, was very counterintuitive. It just didn't make much sense to me. But that is a characteristic of eutectic alloy, that it melts at a lower temperature than either of the constituents. So let's look at our silicon added to our pistons here. The silicon melts at about 2,552 degrees, and the aluminum melts at about 1,220 degrees. They're mixed at a ratio of about 12% silicon to 88% aluminum. The melting temperature of the alloy is 1,070 degrees. All of these pistons have this characteristic to them. So that's our first characteristic. And We'll put up a little video here just to show you what a eutectic alloy looks like for the solder. A quick look at this. And now we'll put up a eutectic alloy that is an aluminum alloy that will give you an idea of what these alloys look like. So our second characteristic that we're dealing with in eutectic alloys is they freeze like a pure element. And this is kind of interesting, but pure elements when they're cooling do not reduce the heat. Okay, as they hit, as they start cooling, they, the temperature holds steady. A non-eutectic alloy, as they start solidifying, the temperature will keep dropping on the alloy. Now, we're going to put up two pictures here to show you, first off, a non-eutectic alloy. And what I want you to look at is when that line comes down to where it starts cooling, you'll notice how the temperature keeps dropping off. So secondly, we're going to put up a video of how a uh, pure element cools. And again, as you watch the line come down, where it starts cooling, if you notice how the line holds a consistent temperature all the way across, that is the characteristic of a pure element. And that is a characteristic of a eutectic alloy. So the third characteristic is, is these things are usually mixed in exact quantities. Now, I mentioned uh, cast iron er earlier. Well, they're talking about, I think it's 4.43% carbon added to it. The mixture is important. Our solder, 
We mix this at 60% tin to 40% lead by weight, okay? And that forms our eutectic alloy for that. For our pistons, we add 12% silicon to 88% aluminum by weight. And that forms the eutectic alloy. Now, to kind of wrap things up on this portion of this, a eutectic alloy is unique and it has three characteristics. Number one, it mounts at a lower temperature than either constituent. Number two, it solidifies like a pure element. And number three, it's mixed in exact ratios. And um, that is the character of a eutectic alloy. All of these pistons are some form of a eutectic alloy. Now, part two, we'll get into some variations on this. But for you to understand what a pure eutectic alloy is, that's where we want to be today. Look for part two. It'll be coming up. And like I say, it'll give you some good ideas on what alloys you might want to use for what applications and give you some idea of how people would design around it. So uh, again, this is Scott Saprizio. It's great having you and I hope you enjoy this video.